So we're having a beautiful hike, just easy going. It's the weather's cooled right down. It's starting to give us some rain right now. We had rain last night, yesterday. I uh, didn't have uh, much to speak of today. It sprinkled a little this morning, but she's sucking in here now. So it'll rain on us tonight, which is fine. We need it. We're happy to have it. Ground's damp. Things are good. This is good. So the weather cooled right down, and life's wonderful, no doubt about it. So I wanted to get up here and just ease my mind. I've had a busy stretch. I have females in heat. Sage and Willow were just here and got bred from with Karoo. They both cycled the same time. They got bred 12 hours apart. So they'll have litters at the same time. And I brought this particular group because they're all genetically the same as sage and willow, pretty much. Uh, all of the genetics that are here are sage and willow, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So those two females are going to have litters. I've got people on the list for them. And uh, I sell pups and will uh, we'll sell the pups from sage and willow this round yet to their young females so we will uh, let them go and then I'll hold back a female later but uh, we'll sell those let up let up let up come let up I'd like to show you Letta because she's uh, exactly what uh, those females are. Letta, come here, Letta. Okay, Luna, come, Letta. But there's Letta. There's Letta. That's Tuba, Luna, Kai, Letta, the male was mine. Letta is pretty much genetically identical to Sage and Willow because Kai and Tika are full sibling sisters and the father of Sage and Willow is Pretty Boy Leaf, same as Letta. So this is pretty much Sage and Willow. I didn't get Sage and Willow up on the hill. They were just here for the breeding and that was it. And uh, so I didn't get them up here. And uh, there's no getting them out of the yard. You move them five feet from Peru and they're whining. So um, I had to just leave them there. But I wanted to show you this genetic. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this instinct. Because lots of people misunderstand instincts. People do not put instincts into dogs. The only way an instinct gets in a dog is from another dog. And no matter how long you raise a dog, you can't put an instinct in it unless another dog has it. <clears throat> so if you want a certain genetic lineage to keep instincts, you have to use dogs that have the instinct to begin with. Now, both dogs do not need to have the instinct. Only one does. The other one, if it has a little remnant of it, perfect. But the one that has it, especially if it can transfer it, can put the instinct in. An instinct is a desired behavior that is inside the dog. You don't have to do anything for it to materialize. You just have to wake it up, basically. And uh, in this particular group, Tuba, come. Tuba. Good, good. Come on, Tuba, come. Good. Good. Come on.
in this particular lineage, this blood, all through this blood, there's a number of factors that's very powerful about this bloodline. One is all the instincts that I like as a breeder are in this blood. The second thing about this blood is they transfer. So every single female that has a pup can put the instinct down to the pup. Every male that has a litter can put the instinct down to the pup. And it doesn't matter the male that I use on the female, and it doesn't matter the female that I use on the male. This particular lineage has such an ability to transfer the instincts that I like, which is, you're seeing it in full display here. They go, they check, they come, they check, they go, they check. This handler focus is, is transferable any direction, from male to female, so on. And it's a phenomenal thing. Now I don't have to, I don't have to do anything other than observe, and at this point, I've already observed enough of this bloodline to know that it doesn't matter what direction I go on this bloodline, it passes the instinct down for the handler focus. And it's a phenomenal lineage for that. So whether it's sage or willow or cedar or aspen or luna or kai or revna or any female I have in the yard, that instinct's there. And all that has to happen is you just simply wake it up. And all I have to do is bring the dog out here as a pup. And it even wakes up before that with this line, but you, you just walk out here with a pup and the instinct wakes up and it's doing it on its own. And so I then just enhance it with hand signs, signals, that sort of thing, but the instinct is there. Now, if the breeder doesn't observe the instinct that he wants to preserve, he has no idea if it's transferring and he has no idea if it's in the dog if he doesn't put the dog in an environment where the instinct is so for example I'll, I'll use a simple thing but it's it's not necessarily that simple but let's just talk about a different breed of dog a Jack Russell Terrier many Jack Russell Terriers today never get to kill a rat so the breeder wouldn't actually know if it's a good rat killer anymore in that lineage. They wouldn't know if it will stay and kill all the rats or just kill one or two and get bored. They wouldn't actually know. And so the basis for what that dog was bred to do was kill rats. Primarily unless the breeder is witnessing it pass down and pass down and pass down they wouldn't actually know if the instinct still resides there. In the elk hound, one of the instincts, of course, is the ability to hunt, and hunt moose specifically. And so in Europe, they want to make sure that they observe the instinct at work. And so in almost all cases, the dogs that are used for breeding have exhibited the ability to hunt, and in many cases, they're the best hunter that they have. And so they trial the dogs against many others there, and they put them into the competitions and so forth, and they judge them, and they have uh, different competitions, different days, and they, different judges, and different areas and regions, and they find out which dog excels and comes to the top and they can give that dog a championship based on all the results from these trials and working, working trials. And they find out which dogs are the superior hunters yet. And then they go ahead and that dog can breed. Now, what's, what's very, very important for the Europeans and for a good breeder 
is they watch the next generation. And so does that dog pass the, pass the ability down? And in, I'll use, I'll use Tuba. So in Tuba's genetic lineage, and Tuba, all of those dogs have the exact same lineage, but I'll talk about Tuba. Tuba's father is an incredible hunting dog from Norway. Uh, he was born in Canada. First time born, he was the first dog born in Canada from that line. Now that line is known to be generations old of the best hunting dogs of all. That particular line was such a good hunting line that they could take a dog to a championship level in Norway and they could go to Sweden and take that dog to a championship level and they could take that dog to Finland and do the same thing. And that, uh, in, in that particular line, um, one of the old boys that was in that category of all three, that's what's called a Nordic champion, so that dog could really, really hunt. <clears throat> Phenomenal. Now when they bred that dog to a female that could really hunt, um, that female was also a very, very good hunter. Lo and behold, the pup that comes out turns out to be a Nordic champion too. He, he goes ahead and wins in all three countries too. And the offspring just passed the ability to hunt down so extremely well and they were so gifted. Uh, they are very, very gifted. And that particular line was known to have a very, very good connection with the handler. And the one dog that, that was really exceptional, he actually could win a championship on the lead. So they would hunt almost all day on the lead and release only just at the last little bit. They wouldn't release that dog and let him go on that particular trial. He could do both. He could hunt off or on the lead. And so these guys are extremely gifted on the lead as well. They'll lead you right to the deer. And you can you can just literally work right up with them. So the instinctive capabilities is, is very, very good at passing down. Now, on the other side of this line, of course, is Dakota. And his whole genetic makeup is to pass that personal handler focus down. That's, 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 he's renowned for that ability and it just passes. So we take that extreme hunt capability and we take that extreme handler focus, bring them down and you get these ultimate hiking dogs. And that's why I can just come out with all the dogs related to that group and just hike all day. They're, they're, having that instinctive ability is phenomenal. Instincts can be very dull in one dog, meaning almost non-existent uh, handler focus, like you would lose the dog if you came out here type of thing. But you could breed Mon to that female, and that pup would be just as good as Mon. Well, very close. He'd be he'd be exceptional hiking dog because Mon has the ability to move it across. Now this this dog should have a remnant, so. In, almost any elk hound has the remnants in the DNA, it's just pink. But you put a dog like Mon in, uh, that sort of thing. Or you take a male that is is not all that good and made him with any one of these females, and all of a sudden the pup is just like a rock star, right? And uh, this, what you're witnessing here is, is the instinctive ability of these females and Mon to just do what they're supposed to do. And we've been hiking a long time, and they just do this all the time I'm moving. They go around, they check for me, and we move on. And we move on, they check, and it's just, it's a constant instinctive ability. Now, I have people that ask questions on the site, <coughs> and on the email, <coughs> because their dog won't come to them. They've got a three-year-old dog or a two-year-old dog or a one-year-old dog and it won't do this. And my, my automatic gut reaction is always the same. Well, it probably does not have the instinctive skill to do that. 
because not all lines are bred for this. If, uh, if you take certain bloodlines in Europe, they are not bred to stay by the handle. They are bred to leave immediately and run until they find a moose and then stand and bark with that moose, follow that moose. They're not bred to, to wander around like this. Um, Satu rarely uh, travels around the bush with the dog with her. She's constantly training that dog to go and bark and she'll track that dog on her GPS. So if you have a dog, an elk hound, that is not coming and, and does not exhibit this, it, it could easily be that that dog has no instinctive skill left for that. And you could easily go back five generations and call the breeders and say, did you ever exhibit the dog doing this? And I, I, I can pretty much guarantee in North America, all of them say, well, no, we never take them off lead. So they would never have known if the dog had the instinctive skill or not. And so when you're looking at this group compared to, say, other groups, now I can't speak for everyone, but I can speak for quite a few, is that unless the breeder has witnessed the instinctive ability in the field like this, you, you couldn't automatically say that that handler focus is in that dog. You, you just couldn't do that. You would have to you would have to see it. Now, I can take Leaf as a breeding dog, guaranteed he was never, um, um, shall we say, extensively worked in this area, Leaf himself, but his bloodline had some work. And when we woke the instinct up in Leaf, it was there. So Leaf can hike all day now. Nova had very thin remnants of it. It took a lot to wake up Nova. But Nova is another lineage that's not in this line. She has it, but it's very, very, it, it's not woke up, but it's, it's pretty good now. She can hike with me pretty much all day. But you made her to Mon, you see, or Karoo, or anybody like that, and boom, boom, boom. That, that instinct is right there in those pups. Look at, look at Silver Nessa and her pups, you see, you get that right back on track. But if you have a dog and potentially the instinct's dull, you might be able to wake it up and you would have to work with that dog in these kinds of settings. Try to get hardly no distractions, come out to an area that's like this, no distractions, and then just you got to be prepared to just kind of either use a long lead to begin with a 50 foot lead and just let it roam and see if it'll start returning when you're asking it to and then uh, work your way up to taking it off it's very difficult with an adult dog because you can't run them down um, if a pup is not coming you you can go get the pup it's uh, you're not going to go get a one-year-old. So, Kai, Luna, come by me. Come on. Where to go, Kai? Where to go, Mon? Come on, Luna. Let up. Tova. Good. What a beautiful girl. Good, Luna. Good. These are full siblings, these two. A miracle pair. Born on the night of the supermoon. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal dogs. Tuva, Leta, come. So yeah, that's just a little touch on, on instincts and uh, I wanted to just just bring that up. Well, so yeah, you guys, uh, you want to get a hold of me in that sage and willow litter. I got a lot of people, a lot of people on those too, but uh, you can get a hold of me.
Let's point the camera down see what these guys got cooking there. Good you guys. What? 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 Good boy. I was on a bad angle there. I think my ankle fell asleep on that one. They're just hunting around that tree there. That's all right.